on the Queen Mary II, this is the biggest uh, propulsion system ever to be made. To reach speeds necessary for the six-day timetable, the ship must produce energy equivalent to powering 200,000 homes. That's a city the size of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. The speed of the ship is absolutely fundamental, and it was of crucial importance to ensure that the ship would be able to arrive and depart on schedule. Four giant diesel engines are placed deep in the bowels of the ship for stability. Because of their large size, the ship has to be built around them. The pistons are nearly one and a half feet across and have a capacity 80 times bigger than that of a city bus engine. Each engine features 16 pistons and at full throttle pumps out 17 megawatts of electricity, pushing the propulsion system to 24 knots. But unlike cruise ships designed for relaxation, the QM2 needs to be an efficient mode of transport, capable of achieving close to 30 knots. Payne has to find a way to generate much more energy. He comes up with an innovative idea. He adds a pair of smaller gas turbines, like those on a Boeing 747, which produce huge power on demand. 50% more than diesel engines, but other factors need to be considered. Gas turbines produce a lot of power for their size, but the biggest problem that they have is that they need an enormous amount of air. Drawing air through large ducts down to the turbines in the engine room would take up valuable space. So the designers come up with another idea. Eventually, a very simple and elegant solution was found in that the gas turbines were placed up immediately behind the funnel where they had full access to um, the outside air. The turbines are light, so putting them at the top of the ship won't affect stability. October 2002. With the diesel engines installed, the rest of the ship can now be built around them.